Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the goodness, the grace. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Pray that you be with those who are on the way as well. We do thank you, Lord, for your protection and for surrounding us with your angels and filling us, filling us with your Holy Spirit. We come here this morning to receive your word. And Father, I pray, Lord, that we would be attentive to receive all that you have for us. Father, we thank you, Lord, and praise you. We pray, Lord, for your peace in Jerusalem, peace on the Korean Peninsula, peace in Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, Rwanda, South Sudan, Republic of the Philippines, and the United States of America. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we curse this, this uh, virus and command it to die and to be killed in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray you protect each one here and their families as well, and all uh, Victory Christian Fellowship, all 81 Methodist Church. And, and Father, may this Stop right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we pray for wisdom and protection for our presidents and our families. Wisdom and protection for each one of this church, pastors, uh, the elders, uh, all the members, Lord, and wisdom and protection for each uh, Victory Christian Fellowship pastors as well, spouses and children, and every member, Lord, wisdom and protection in Victory Christian Fellowship here and elsewhere. And Father, I pray, Lord, that our faith will not fail, but we will grow and know, Father, as we face this spiritual battle, that we need not fear, for you are on our side, and we should not fear. We thank you, Lord. And Father, we do pray for um, healing, for those who need healing. And by the stripes of Jesus, may they be declared healed and whole in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, for those who are seeking employment, may they know and trust in you that there will be 100% full-time gainful employment for every member in Victory Christian Fellowship that need a job and that, Lord, they need not fret, need not worry, for you are the provider. And we thank you, Lord, grace us with your presence and may your Holy Spirit be here as we will uh, study and receive your word. And again, let us come here expecting to receive your word and be changed and transformed our minds renewed. Thank you, and I ask that you anoint me with your Holy Spirit, that your word shall go forth in power, and that revelatory word shall come, shall be revealed, so that everyone will see all that you have for us. Give us understanding, Lord, of your word. We thank you, we praise you, we give you all the glory, all the honor, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Give the Lord praise back. The God is good all the time. So, as you notice, we are in a different location, but praise the Lord, because the gospel can be shared any place. Amen? Amen. All right. So, it's good. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to be in the presence of the Lord. So, we continue on in 2 Peter 1, 6, as uh, Deacon Elias uh, read, that we should add patience to temperance. And we know that temperance is self-control, Right? And then that should be added to knowledge, and knowledge to virtue as well. So this 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 patience that I'm, I'm sharing with you today is not the patience that we all think about. Many people think patience at the um, at the at the bus stop or the subway, right? So we have patience, oh, patience, and all that, right? 
Some of us, uh, you know what a yakusok is in Korean? Yakusok, where you have, uh, say, I'm going to meet you at uh, McDonald's or Starbucks, right? You say, I'm going to meet you at McDonald's today at uh, 1 o'clock. So somebody is late. So patience is not like, oh, I'm going to have patience for someone who's coming. And it's 105 and 107, OK? In, uh, I come from uh, Hawaii, and we said Hawaii time. Hawaii time. So I make a uh, 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 promise for a, a appointment with somebody, my friends, right, in high school. I say, hey, uh, so come up to my house at 6 o'clock, pick me up in the car. So it's 7.30 and 8 o'clock. Finally, they come in at 8.15, and they, they drive up to the house, right? As if, like, nothing was wrong. We call that Hawaii time. Amen? <laughs> That's not patience. Because by that time, we're already sleeping, see? 8.15. It's supposed to be there at 6 o'clock. And they walk in like nothing happened. Like this was, uh, that's not what the patience I'm talking about. This patience is patient enduring that we know what's going to be ahead. We know that we're going to be, we're going to have eternal life with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what this patience is. We are on a journey in this life. There's, there's a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of things going on, right? And patience is the patient about the day that we're going to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there will be a, a uh, uh, reunion. You ever heard of a reunion? How many of you have been to a high school reunion? Did you guys have friends in high school? Yeah. Some of us didn't have friends, so you probably didn't go to the reunion, okay? I have never been to a high school reunion yet, only because of my job, I was stationed overseas, right? And I couldn't, uh, you know, uh, that the timing wasn't right to go there to the reunion. But um, we are all, as Christians, if you are a believer, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, if you believe that God raised him from the dead, we are all going to have a reunion. That reunion is going to be in the clouds. Jesus, at a certain time, people have died. Okay? Christians have died in the past. And they're, they are now in the spirit. They're in, in, um, in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are here on earth. Amen? How many of you appreciate being here on earth? Okay, amen? You like your health? Okay, amen. Me too. Okay? So we're on a journey, but at a certain time, there's going to be a time when maybe some of us will pass away, right? And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a sad thing for people on the earth, but the great thing is you'll be with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, amen? Amen. But you'll be in your spirit and soul, okay? Not your body. Your body will stay here. So there'll be a time when God the Father is going to tell Jesus, Go down in the clouds and go pick up the believers, okay? So, along with Jesus, the people who are already with Jesus are going to come and follow him in the clouds. We here, or if you're still living here on earth, are going to get taken up into the clouds in our spirit and soul, right? The body will stay here. See, the body is going to go back to the dust, right? Just like Adam was created out of clay, out of dust. His body is going to go back to that. But we will go and meet him in the clouds. And you know, then, at that time, we will receive, after our judgment, we're going to receive this glorified body. No more sickness, no more disease, no more cancer, no more nothing. And we will live in eternity. So that's what we can look forward to. So having that understanding that we're going to go through difficult times in this world. We're going to go through all these things throughout this world. We will all meet in the clouds someday. So maybe you will go back to your particular home country. I will go back to my home country. But as Christians, we're going to meet each other. Right? So don't say goodbye to anyone. Goodbye means you'll never see them again. Just say so long for now. We'll see you in the clouds, OK? Somebody wrote a song, I will meet you, we will meet each other in the clouds, or something like that. I, I don't know what the words are, I just made it up. But somebody had a song, okay? So anyway, let's go to uh, 1 John 3, 2. 
1 John 3, 2. If you don't have uh, one of these, raise up your hand for us and we'll gladly give you one of these. Who doesn't have one? Raise up your hand. All right. Raise up your hand. Here, right here. I should stand up. Let's go. You missed her. Amen. Everybody gets one. Not only do you give the bulletin too. You don't have bulletins? No, Pastor. It's pretty like different. Oh. It was different? Yeah. Yes. Add patience to temperance. That's what we're talking about, right? You guys all no wonder you looking at me like, what are you talking about, Pastor? <laughs> Add patience to temperance. You have that? Yes. Amen. Okay. Amen. It all looks the same, but it's not the same. Right? Sorry if you had the wrong one, that's my bad, because okay, I know there was some confusion on where I was. Add temp patience to temperance. Okay, so 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 says this, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he, who's he? Jesus shall appear, we shall be like him. Who's him? Jesus. Jesus, for we shall see him as he is. So when we meet Jesus in the clouds, we're going to be just like him. What? So what is Jesus now? What, what are we talking about here? Let's go back 2,000 years ago. Not many of us were living 2,000 years ago, amen? So Jesus came to, the, came to this earth, born of the Virgin Mary. He died, uh, right? And who was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. So he was full God, full man. And he, uh, he, he was crucified on the cross, and then he was buried, and then on the third day, God raised him from the dead. Then he walked on this earth for about 40 days, and then lifted in the clouds into heaven to be with the Father. And during that time, what happened was, Jesus now was given his glorified body. Okay? So let's get a Let's get an understanding, a glimpse of this glorified body. And it's found in Revelation 1.13. The Apostle John is writing this down. And he says this, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like a fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So we see here that Jesus is now in his glorified state. The Apostle John was so scared as he saw Jesus coming, right? The Son of Man coming in his glorified state. With white hair, what else? And we'll read it in the end of this minute, right? White hair, and uh, his head and his hair, his head was white, or white like wool, as white as snow, his eyes were like a flame of fire. So, this is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ in his glorified state. We are also going to have his body that's going to be in this glorified state. And then that is, because when we are, in, uh, we go in the clouds, the people who died first are going to have this uh, uh, glorified body first, because they died first. And then we who are alive, who are still alive, are going to also have a glorified body. And uh, hopefully we're not going to scare one, one another, amen? Look at somebody and smile. Are you scared? No. Okay. And when we have this glorified body, hopefully we will not be uh, afraid of one another. We're not going to be, right? But you know, this glorified body will be for eternity. There will be no more sickness, no more disease. You know, a lot of times we focus only on our bodies here, right? But this body is going to go away. Uh, we spend the world, in the world, billions of dollars trying to keep our bodies healthy and safe. This is all going to go back to dust. We take care of the bodies, which is okay, but just remember, this is all temporal. So the patience that we have 
the patient should be someday we're going to have this glorified body. Can you imagine that? How many of you are happy with your nose? <laughs> how, how, many, how many of you want a new nose? Okay. <laughs> what about your eyes? People are into this double eyes, right? Yes? You don't like the single eyelid. Yes? Some people don't, don't like the skinny cheeks. So they make their cheeks. <laughs> they look like uh, chipmunks. <laughs> You're going to have a glorified body. It's going to be beautiful and wonderful. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's have patience up until that time. Patience. We're going to have this glorified body. Christians ought to realize the things of this world are all temporal. Temporal. You know, temporal, temporal, sometimes we think they have something forever, right? How many of you have uh, at least a second iPhone? Who has their original iPhone? Where does it have problems? No one, right? So some of you have like second, third, fourth <laughs> iPhones, amen? Amen. Yes? Okay. So what does that mean? Is that everybody thinks, oh, it's the last iPhone I'm going to buy. Then a new one comes out. Yes? So you're going to buy that new one. Because you want to be hip-hop. <laughs> and then, that happened five years ago, and they keep buying these new iPhones. If you're going to give it away, give it to me, okay? <laughs> I'm still working on the J5. J5. Anybody know J5? Yeah, I have J5. <laughs> Only two reasons for iPhone, in my mind. One, send a text, and two, call to someone. Anything else, you don't need an iPhone. Amen? Amen. You don't agree. Most of you don't agree. Amen. What are you guys doing on this iPhone? It, it just really captivates most of you. You bring that. Go on your iPhone and talk to people. Why? I see people always on the iPhone. Why? Look at somebody say, why? I don't know why you guys have this iPhone. Only two reasons. Make a phone call and then make a text, amen? Amen. So why are we on this iPhone? I mean, why do you need the latest one? If the J1 works, why do you need the J5? Was there a J1? <laughs> I don't know, I just made that up, okay? So, work with me on this one. So, all this is temporal. You always want the latest and the greatest and the new one and all that, but it's all temporal. I once bought a computer, uh, a 486. Somebody say 486. That was the latest and greatest model. So you look at what? Who knows what a 486 is? Okay, all these old guys. <laughs> we know. 486 was at one time the top of the line, right? We were streaming. We only had to wait like 15 minutes before the program should change. But since then, we bought new computers, right? Or my phones, or whatever you do. These are temporal. So look at that as temporal. Don't look at everything as uh, permanent on this on this earth. Even our bodies are temporal. First John two seventeen. And the world passing away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. When I was transitioning from one profession to another, I said, so what do I, what do I want to do when I grow up, right? What do I want to do when I grow up? Because these things pass away, right? And I determine in my heart what I'm going to do is do the will of God. So whatever God wanted me to do, I would do. I was not looking for the best paying job. I was not looking for uh, career progression. I was not looking for anything else, good location to live. All those factors did not matter. What mattered was I'm going to do the will of God. And from that time, I have been earnestly serving to do the 
will of God. Nothing else. Now, this, for any of us, we say, well, I'm doing the will of God. But check your motives here. Check your motives. Why are you doing things? It's because what? You're looking for financial gain? You're looking for career enhancement, uh, progression? But what's going to last forever is doing the will of God. That's why the Bible says but in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and some other things will be added. All these things shall be added unto you. Right? How many of you believe that? How many of you in your heart have said, I'm going to, my life, whatever it is, God, I'm going to do the will of God. Here am I. When I told God, when I told Jesus, here am I, Lord, send me. I really meant that. It was not a, um, a saying to make, you know, sound spiritual. It was, I really meant to say, here am I, Lord, send me. And that's why I'm here today. And I believe I'm doing the will of God. Are you doing the will of God? There's all these other things so are all temporal. I know many people, okay, we get a lot of people that come from different countries in this place, right, in this church that they learn, well, in Korea. And during the time that they are here, we got, right here, come up here. During the time that uh, they are here, they're making a lot of money. A lot of money. A lot of want, right? They make a lot of money. Amen? Yes? Then all of a sudden, they go back to their home countries and the money dries up. You know what I'm talking about? And so then now they're thinking about, um, wow, I wish I was back in Korea so I can make more money. You see, even the wealth that you have now can be all gone. You know, after you spend it, be God. It's temporal. You know what temporal is? So maybe right now you live in large and you say, hey, I can go to a big, uh, I can go buy a Big Mac combo. Okay, not just a hamburger, but a Big Mac combo. What do you say? Big Mac combination. <laughs> Why? Because you're rolling in the dough. You're making a lot of money, great, and all that. Then you go back to wherever you came from and then slowly he dries up, right? Before you know it, you don't have all that wealth. Temporal. It passes away. It pass away. So the state that you are in now, but is your faith going to still be strong in the Lord during that time? Is your faith going to still be strong? That's my question. Is your faith going to still be strong whether you have plenty or whether you have a little? I just pray that your faith is going to remain strong because why? You know that wherever God has planted you, you're going to do the will of God. Amen. So as believers, don't focus on the things of this world because they will pass away. And I want you to know that, that if you're doing the will of God, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter uh, where you're at, what, what you're current economic status, financial status is, even what your account is, if you're doing the work of the God. Okay? Because some people, they, they suffer a lot. I've, I've seen that. But now all of a sudden their, their health deteriorates. Um, I'd like to live to 120 like Moses. Alright? But, I may not live to 120 like Moses. But I may. Okay. I'm saying I won't. I may. Amen? You might live to 120 like Moses. Yes? No. But you may not. Okay, so don't even focus too much. Put, don't put that first. Put doing the will of God first in your life. Amen? Amen. So James 1 2 says this. My brethren, count it all joy. Somebody say, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptations or uh, various temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. 
but letting patients have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. So we're going to go through difficulties in life. We're going to go through ups and downs. But God wants you to, to your character to build during these times where you will have your patience will, will, um, will, will grow and that you will not be discouraged. So many people in their Christian walk, when bad things happen, become discouraged, become very discouraged in their faith. If you notice this morning I pray that your faith will not fail, right? Amen. Because you can get caught up in the current situations and all your mind is mm -hmm. just focusing on mm -hmm. the things of this world because it's fear. Uh, many of you are um, you seek knowledge of the world. You want to know what's going on in the world. But what's happening, it may cause you fear. God does not give us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Amen? Amen. I have an auntie, and I'm not going to mention her name, but she's an aunt, you know, like our father's sister, right? Every time she watches the TV or reads in the newspaper about some kind of illness, she always says, oh, I wonder if I have that illness. <laughs> She'll go to the doctor and figure it out, and all that. So my father says, you know what? And he, and he tells her, don't worry about it. Every single time, she always worries about it. Oh, I've got the symptoms. Oh, I've got to go to the doctor. <laughs> There's only one person happy, the doctor. <laughs> Why? Because you got to pay the doctor, right? We need to be wise. Okay? Don't, don't walk out into the, into the, the, the trap, okay? But don't let your faith fail. Don't let your faith in, in the Lord Jesus Christ fail. You know, just by you coming out here this morning, you expressed, you, you manifested your faith. You demonstrated your faith. Just by coming out here, okay? If you want to take zero risk, just stay in your house. Don't go out. Don't go to work. <laughs> don't meet anyone. And order um, by, uh, what's that thing called? DHL or FedEx. And they will deliver the food to your house. Amen? <laughs> don't go out. You want to minimize risk? Just stay in. You know what? Man and woman of God, walk by faith. And not by sight. And don't let fear, don't let fear overcome you. Be wise as a serpent. Harmless as a dog. We still need to use wisdom. But don't be someone that's going to be walking in fear. Because then, you, fear is the opposite of what? Faith. Right? Faith is trusting in God with wisdom, and we live this life. We're not going to be crazy. You don't, you don't, you don't walk crazy, right? I was. Uh, in this prison once. I, I didn't go to jail now. Okay. <laughs> we went there to preach the gospel. And the warden showed us uh, the prison. All the people. And it was built for 200 people. But 800 people were in there. Can you imagine that? Horrible, right? So they showed us all the places. They said, okay, this is the place where the women are. You know, I'm not going to go into the, you know, uh, this is where all the people with the tuberculosis are. I said, okay, thanks. Maybe we just walked away. I think we need to go to a different place. This is where all the murderers and the rapists are. Oh, okay. What's going on, man? So we left, and then after that, we preached the gospel. So I'm not going to walk into the place where all the people have tuberculosis. You understand? To prove I'm a man of God. Right? No. We use wisdom. But do not fear. You can live a life walking in wisdom without living in fear. Okay. Amen? Amen.
Alright, so 2 Corinthians, uh, Thessalonians 1 3 says this. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is me, because that your faith grow exceedingly in the charity of every one of your you all toward each other abounded, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecution and tribulations that you endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. So patience needs to be uh, mixed with faith. What is our faith? Our faith and our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know as believers that someday we're going to meet all the other Christians in the cloud and be clothed with this glorified body, right? So we should have this patience that is enduring. So let me just give you this, uh, uh, it's a simple conclusion to this all. It's that we go through these difficult times in life and some things we can just ignore. We don't have to respond to it, right? But some, and, and just, just let it go because this too, look at it, shall come to pass. Whatever situation now shall come to pass, okay? We walk wisely and all that, but we have patience and then this shall come to pass. And then we trust in God every step of the way. Every step of the way for all our need, everything for health and protection, Everything, you just live one day at a time, and then this too shall come to pass. And then we know that as we go through life, and sometimes it goes up, and sometimes it goes down, and sometimes it's even, but all this too will come to pass. All this is temporal, and then one day we will meet the Lord Jesus Christ. We will all be together. So, Love one another now. Amen? Amen. Look left. Look left. <laughs> look right. Look behind you. Get somebody back in front. Okay? And smile at one another. Okay, just pretend you smile. Okay? Because I cannot see you. But smile because you know what? As believers, we're going to live with each other for eternity. You know what eternity is? Never ending. So in your mansion, for the King James people, and I people will get drones. In your mansions, leave your doors unlocked. Amen? So we can invite one another into the house. Some of you know what hospitality is, right? Amen. Some of you need to learn about hospitality. But in heaven, leave your doors unlocked. We're going to have these mansions and these rooms, whatever, and we're going to be living with each other for eternity. So why can't we begin to love one another and, um, and, and just know that someday with this patience, patient enduring, endurance, we're all going to be together in our Lord Father. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Let us have this eternal uh, patience will be added to temperance that uh, Father is more than just uh, a temporal kind of patience but eternal patience because someday someday we will be clothed with that uh, glorified body we will be glorified we will all join together in a great reunion we will spend eternity with one another experience all the things that we are going to go through uh, right now let us uh, be patient with one another uh, and patient Lord, until that time we see Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, face to face. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.